So I was in uh, Delhi, then to Mizoram. Mizoram, I was in Nathia, and then also in as DC of Aizol, the district magistrate in uh, the capital uh, district. There, <coughs> of course, uh, you have to learn Mizo. Uh, actually, in Agmud Kader, you don't have to learn all the languages. Uh, you can just not know the language and survive. But in uh, Mizoram, I had tried to learn the language. So once you learn the language, it becomes a little more, people are more welcoming. And uh, because they can at least come and communicate their issues uh, in their language, you know. Many of us go there thinking that all people have to now learn Hindi or English, you know, because I have come and I don't know their language. So this uh, happened in, uh, and it's after some quite a long time that a non miso was posted as a DCI is all there. There are few things that we did in uh, in in Aizol, which had nothing to do with me being a government servant but that three letters help that is thing help first was in nathial nathial uh, is a subdivision in bordering burma and uh, how many of you know mizoram mizoram any idea capital okay at least that much you know no no okay <laughs> So, when this happened, uh, when, when I went to Nathial, there is nothing. Uh, there was no, no office. There is no house. The subdivision headquarter, there is no house. There is no office. The office is a Narega, this Seva Kendra. You have no Narega, the Seva Kendra is there. So, that is the uh, office of subdivisional magistrate. And there is no house at all. The previous SDM used to stay in Aizol and he used to travel more and often. And then uh, that's like six hours. And he used to come and uh, go uh, once in a, this thing and he used to take a rented. So we took, went there, I took a rented house uh, in a third floor. So many of us think we go and just palatial home, just uh, walk in and you know. There is no nothing, nothing in the sense, no, no help, nothing. And third floor, uh, we took a rented with plywood uh, divided into this home and the home uh, office also office was also like they were like why are you mm, there is no much work uh, why are you here like every day <laughs> you can come once in a week <laughs> basically it was certificate distribution at that point of time but then i started reading i started reading i learned that there is a act called the land land revenue act in uh, mizoram and they were just building up this land reforms land revenue part I learned that SDM can actually remove any encroachment and if anybody tries to oppose that, the SDM can actually send somebody to jail for 14 days. Not judicial magistrate or police or anything. SDM can send people to jail. Exciting. You can send people to jail. <laughs> so, that is power. That is power. And this, this is the key thing that happens. The transformation that happens is people start learning about their powers more than their duties and responsibilities and the power sort of gets in so i also did the same thing i it is like a huge forest area okay, and the population of the entire subdivision is like 12000 people maybe 30 sorry 30000 people the whole subdivision 30, yeah. and it's a huge and people used to stay wherever they feel like you know somewhere here and village council kind of a concept was there Suddenly, I wanted to enforce the entire Land Revenue Act onto that area. I started issuing notices to people to encroach, you know, this is encroachment, that is encroachment. And people are like, what? <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> you know, <laughs> there is no need of any of this. And suddenly, you start. And I understood people are also not very happy. That's when a senior officer called me. He said, Kanan, how, is, how are things? I said, sir, I am sending all these notices. I am teaching land laws to, you know, these people. These people don't know Land Revenue Act. They should know how to live under proper... No, you feel that feeling that I am here to civilize the entire population and teach them about law and make sure everybody knows things. It comes. And when that happened, I, I told this. Then he said something very simple. Uh, he was like, and there are two kinds of things. One is government's work. The other is people's work. Okay, you are also called a government servant. You are also called a public servant. Okay, so there are two kinds of work. You have to choose which one you want to focus on, whether it is the government's work or it's the people's work. And 
of course many a times government's work is only people's work but a lot of the time it is not uh, it's completely useless stuff what the government does and encroachment removal is it really required there he asked me i said no sir but uh, there is power and i have full i can do it so <laughs> why should i not do it you know i should i should tell them uh, that i can send people to jail anyway that he gave uh, this uh, uh, sort of a thing and i came back and i had a, i st i called people for a meeting after i asked what is it that is required in this subdivision because i never had a meeting to understand what is required there they said so the entire subdivision does not have an atm i am teaching them encroachment removal there is no internet in the entire subdivision okay so you get that you know that there is a picture that has come on your whatsapp but you cannot download it no it will keep circling so it's like most frustrating thing if you don't know picture has come it's okay but you know there is a picture and then you can't download it <laughs> then it is like ah <laughs> you will keep trying <laughs> so that was the scenario then uh, atm thing i think okay so i wrote a letter to the sbi chairperson arunthati bhattacharya in that his office her office saying that ma'am uh, so and so i am so and so kanan gopinathan ias from here and here there is no atm there was some proposal for an atm but it was not happening so uh, please can you help us get an atm in the subdivision i wrote uh, whenever i used to write i used to write like jandan yojana and prime minister so four times i used to write prime minister so i don't know whether to use or not but just prime minister jandan yojana and we don't even have an atm what kind of jandan yojana are we running so then this happened uh, she replied her office replied that okay here we are sanctioning an atm please find a place to locate it and that was the biggest achievement for, for me in that subdivision because people had to travel 3 hours to withdraw money and it was never government's priority at any any place because government that is what the delhi decides what is government's priority whereas the issue of you know you asked why collectors rebel because collectors know the issues of people the more you go up the more you go further from people and then you start meeting only the consultants you start meeting only the people who are above you and then you suddenly think that is it it is not it is, it is the biggest thing that has happened to me is that i think i resigned at the collector level if i had waited for another 10 years to resign my understanding would have been very different uh, that's what i feel so when uh, then i wrote to in, uh, bsnl that what the pms digital india there is no internet this is 2014 i am talking okay uh, you might think i am talking some prehistoric times <laughs> this is 2014 and this is the india that is also india it's not bangalore there is no internet there is no atm entire subdivision okay and that, that's why we were pushing digital india and stuff like that everything can be online everything can be this there was one one delegation which came from mha which said that along the border of india and myanmar we will have smart card based entry system okay i was like what uh, have you ever been to <laughs> because you know across the both sides are misos so they come here for charging and then they go back you are saying you will have a smart card system <laughs> what what is it with, with complete absolute lack of understanding of reality and they because there is no critical thinking nobody is asking that question was is it really going to work we we said no this is not going to work so this 80 internet also we got some 32 connections and in 2014 i used to ration internet connections of course one was for me and my home the other 30 used to you know whom should you give to here here who should get priority 2014 subdivision so that is a key aspect you know a random call from a very senior he was an observer to me in election when i was conducting when i was in delhi conducting the elections he had come to me as, as an observer he randomly called he said this and then yes that's you know certain things happen that do you understand this is different issues and then you start focusing on uh, that and then from there of course i came as dc aizol and aizol within 15 days of her taking charge there was a earthquake and everything started shattering uh, house there is a big house and everything good house it's not like nathia all started running i also started running and i everybody started running going out and like in 5 10 minutes chief secretary's office is calling and say sir is asking kanan how is how are things so i said sir i am safe 
<laughs> I don't know. I have no idea what it is yet. <laughs> I just know I am safe. <laughs> Your DC is safe. <laughs> so <laughs> she said, find out about the details and get back. That's when I realized we don't have a protocol for communication in disasters. That we don't know that how the information has to come from below to the top and at what intervals this information has to come whether it's the first 15 minutes after the 30 minutes then we sort of made a small kind of that in 15 minutes uh, said any if something of this scale happens then let's just get out and see whether the buildings around have got damaged or not then you uh, report it so just a visual you know at least you know you get out and see okay vijayanagara there is a lot of things then you know where to focus your resources on in the 15 minutes only you can and if you know the initial report is not the second was like you go to all the critical infrastructure that is your hospitals your police stations your fire stations your you know those places and see whether they are in place or not your connectivity is. so then we developed sort of a thing and then we then i wanted to convert it into an app because isol is nothing there was i wanted to do a lot of apps but nothing there was no internet so i came to isol and there is internet so create app app is the most uh, you know easy thing bureaucracy does every day one or two apps so easiest thing to do and we keep doing it i also wanted to do but the thing is that there was no designer so then i learned xml i learned android every day at 4:30 in the morning i used to learn android and xml and i used to make the app so the disaster management app he mentioned it actually coded by me not just developed in the sense of, <laughs> of, of that so it got coded and then i presented it before the uh, chief uh, secretary and others then they gave me two engineers and they were brilliant engineers and then they made it into whatever the app you can still see the app it got some award also later uh, so that app was actually you know that is again to work on learning and things because you wanted to do something there is no need for you to do any of that you do there nobody would ask you to learn uh, code or write a letter to uh, chief you know sbi chairperson or you know because when people's issues become your issues you start thinking about how can i leverage myself how can i leverage myself to for the betterment of people and that is when you decide your ego doesn't matter okay you are begging literally as an ias officer why should i go and beg before anybody some dgm of bsnl why should i go and request him repeatedly calling sir please why should i do that your ego is then you, know, you are a senior you are an ias officer but when your ego is standing between public's benefit you know standing then you should forgo your ego but i have an issue if my ego stands with my own benefit i choose my ego you understand you know if you know if i have i am standing to gain something and if my self respect or you know by just saying this much if i gain something i will choose the self respect or my ego but if my doing this has a benefit to 100 people then you should always do that you you are there you are carrying the expectations of the people public expectation is bigger than your ego is bigger than your own benefits this thing is up to you whether to do or not but be clear about the first part public expectations and benefits is always always bigger than your ego okay many a times many things get stopped not because of principle difference and stuff like that because we just become little egoist we say no why should i go to his chamber i am senior he should come to my chamber maybe if it is just that much it's okay but if that precise act is going to stand you know against the benefit public benefit i would say it doesn't matter go have a cup of coffee and then differ you are you are you, you and your ego and your this thing have absolutely no relevance when it comes to public service delivery then in isol something that uh, which you might not have heard in fact it had come in tata trust magazine as one of the cover thing the bureaucratic zeal what happened was somebody wrote on twitter that arunachal pradesh is, i have time right that's already 6:30 so i in somebody uh, wrote that arunachal pradesh is going to get a badminton academy uh, sai is going to start and uh, so at that point of time it was like arunachal uh, is a bjp ruled uh, state mizoram is a congress ruled state so you know the step 
motherly statement, you know, whatever that happens, that used to happen. So I wrote like, uh, why not in Mizoram, in Twitter only, you can still go and search it. Uh, why not in uh, Mizoram, because there is a tremendous badminton uh, talent and infrastructure here. Why we are not having an academy in Mizoram? Uh, and then I also added, do, do anybody, you know, uh, can anybody get in me in touch with Pulela Gopicha? At that much only. I wrote and people started responding. Uh, I we used to do it. I used to do it uh, a lot that I have asked for mobile phones from ex all over the country for a project. People have come, I requested. Bangalore people have sent mobiles to ISOL, uh, or, you know, for projects, various projects. No government money, nothing. Okay. So when this happened, uh, some newspaper editor, uh, some journalist, he tried to contact Gopichan that they were in, I think, Barcelona Olympics or something. They contacted uh, Sindhu, TV Sindhu, and then she, through her, uh, they tried to contact uh, Pulela Gopichan, uh, Gopi sir. And then, uh, of course, at that point of time, somebody wants to talk from Aizol, he also ignored. Uh, nothing happened. But after some time, I got his number, personal number, from somebody. I was keep, I was doing this only, continuous. When I got the number, I sent him a message. Hello, Gopi sir. Uh, this is Kanan Gopinathan, uh, uh, DC Aizol. Uh, I am sorry to be directly connecting to you like this. Uh, then I realized I don't even know whether it is his number. I sent to some some number. Somebody gave this is a number of Kulela Gopichand. I sent a message. Then I wrote, assuming this is Kulela Gopichand. So then he writes, yes, this is P Gopichand. I remember exactly. And then my reply was, wow. <laughs> then, uh, then I talked to him. I said, please come to Mizra. You just see the people, our, you know, talent kids there. See them. And if you think at least three or four can be taken. Because we were really good. Mizoram, the kids were really good. But they were not crossing the threshold because of lack of coaching. Okay. Many a times in sports, we put a lot of in, in, uh, importance to infrastructure. We put, put a lot of infra, uh, importance to uh, players and the talent. Actually, if you want to develop any sport, you have to do three things. One is coach. Coaching is important because once you develop the coaching part, no, they want the, their players to come out and they will put their effort. Second is refereeing because we we take this talent without them knowing what are the rules of the game and they start, you know, uh, they don't know how to develop in a professional way. And third is infrastructure. Talent is the last part. You don't have to worry about talent. We All our processes is like identifying talent from very young age, you know, uh, like that. Uh, it should be the, I, I, that's my personal opinion. So then when this happened, I said, please come over. My idea was also exactly like this. You come over, please identify three, four talent from Mizoram. I will get sure that ensure that we get some sponsorship. And by that time, I used to go to Delhi, go to some PSU, meet some CMD and say, sir, I need CSR. Okay, from 5 lakh, 10 lakh, 20 lakh, 1 crore, whichever project. Because Mizoram is not having that much of state government, was not having that much of resource. So I used to go personally and request anybody that give some money for my district, whichever money is for the people. So when this uh, uh, this thing have I told him he, for one year he did, you know he's like I'm coming I'm coming I'm coming. Then I meanwhile I started talking to Tata Trust also requesting them whether they will be in a position to sponsor these kids if Gopichan selects them. It's a very costly experience to come to uh, Hyderabad and uh, get his training done there. This happened. He came after a long time. He came one year and in one of the interviews he's asked why are you here? He says that your DC was pestering me for the last one year. <laughs> that is the only reason I came. <laughs> and in, it's a funny story how he came. He almost missed his flight from Kolkata and I had to call somebody and made, do some hanky panky so that the other flight also gets delayed. And then he, <laughs> he reached Aizol. So <laughs> he reached. And when he reached, he saw the talent and he said, I want to start an academy here. I don't want to take kids from here to Hyderabad. In fact, there is sufficient talent here. I want an academy here. Then Tata Trust came forward. We were just doing this. Tata Trust came forward and said, we are ready to invest. Okay. Not only the academy, Tata Trust said, we want to invest in grassroots centers of badminton in all the districts. Okay. And today, there is a Pulela Gopichan grassroots centers in all the districts in Mizoram. And a high altitude center for excellence is under construction in Aizor. With zero money. With, with zero. No, nothing from the government. The land, people donated. We did not acquire. People donated the land because Mizoram Badminton Academy, the association people, the sports people, all of them came together 
once this happened and it did not happen because of government it happened because of those three letters because you could when a person in power is requesting for the benefit of the public a lot of people are ready to come together and help that's what i learned and lot of things that is coming up you know some mothers send me messages saying that sir this my kid is now in this grassroots center with a t-shirt go pitch and this thing this is something you started that is nobody can take that away so these so why do you want to be nice for this feeling i am sure you also want to share such stories sometime you know when i resigned from dadra nagar haveli of dadra nagar haveli i was you know in uts you get a lot of responsibilities so i was collector i was gst commissioner i was vat commissioner i was excise commissioner i was labor commissioner i was dig prisons i was director municipality i was secretary social welfare i was secretary labor i was chairman planning and development authority i was director municipality i was director gad i was also md of a 3000 crore corporation i was also md of a finance corporation i was also secretary power i was also secretary urban development which is small ut okay so you learn a lot of experience you learn from all this what is happening gst what is happening bad if you are understanding is to learn second thing most important is one is delivery second is every posting is an opportunity to learn you have to be very clear of that it's important to learn continuously uh, otherwise what happens in the preparation you are learning about entire world okay everything universe what happened in some i don't know some andromeda galaxy then then suddenly you start getting into the service you go to a state and you go to the academy ias academy in lavasna all that you are taught is about india indian law indian this thing then you go to the state all that you are taught is state then you go to a subdivision then like who reads newspaper i have so many issues here to take care of and then you stop reading you stop learning what you have acquired during the preparation days is not just knowledge it is also the capacity to acquire knowledge and when you stop doing that what you are doing is that that capacity to acquire knowledge it starts diminishing i used to read five newspapers until my day of resignation five newspapers three economic newspapers and two newspapers separate while i was collector you have to put that effort because otherwise what happens your learning temperament goes down for us this is a chore right is like somehow get to the service but you read something and you know write the exam and clear it you pick whatever topic you want to read i'm not saying you want just like upsc preparation you have to read everything about everything whatever you want to read you read but don't lose that habit of reading don't let your capacity of learning you know acquiring knowledge that's a very important thing that you are acquiring right now every day when you are listening this much going back reading this thing this thing this thing this thing and also the capacity to acquire knowledge fast not just a capacity to acquire it's also to acquire it fast this is a thing you should not leave so these gave me a lot of opportunity to learn so i am very thankful to my and we could also turn around that uh, discom which is a 3000 crore corporation from loss making to a profit making in just one and a half years it was you know uh, so you, there, this is something that you can do from being an md you know, when i was posted as md somebody on twitter wrote only ias people and ambani kids can be mds of companies without any knowledge it's true i had no idea how it is a company you are not ever taught what's a company what is corporation you know how to run a company you are not taught then you learn but you are taught one thing uh, what is it the capacity to acquire knowledge and if you are still keeping it in you you can do anything once you do that and that is what has happened uh, you can learn once you learn it it's not a big thing you, you cracked upsc learning how to run a company is not a big thing you can do it and this change and when i you know and second part dadra nagar the beautiful part was there is 50 50 uh, percent of it is tribal so we used to travel in a vehicle car uh, the, the district collector vehicle so people used to tell ki saab jo hai is area mein aaya hai this this and people used to literally come out on the stop uh, in the road and stop my vehicle not to complain or anything just to say come to our village that is the kind of ownership they had over the officer 
that they could stop a collector's vehicle and say, come to our village. These are the issues that we have. Solve it and go. And this is something, the confidence that you give as an officer to the people. That you can, it's, it's your rightful, you know, uh, uh, it's your right to come out and say, this is my issue. Otherwise, what happens? Many of, many of the average village person are afraid to go to any government office. Why? We all have tremendous officers. Why is it that an average person is afraid to go to a government office? He thinks 10 times. And he then he tries to call somebody. Sir, aap unko jante hai. You know, you know somebody, some uh, counselor, some MLA, somebody, somebody. Aap ek bar bata dijiye. Then he will go. We are paid to serve them. But even to come and see us, they need to approach somebody. That is the system we have. This is the confidence that you have to give to the people. That no, it's it, you can. I wrote my this thing in every school, everywhere. They used to write only official things. Said, no. And people are respectful. They don't call you unnecessarily. They don't disturb you unnecessarily. Only when there is an issue, they, they call. Otherwise, they don't. So when I resigned, the people came and said, Sir, why you resign? They were like, cry, you know, very emotional. Uh, why are you doing this? You know, whatever be it, we'll... And then they said, Aap gao jayenge, aap ghar jayenge na, apna gao mein jo ghar hai, udhar jayenge. So I said, nahi, uh, I don't have a house in even my village. Ghar mein bhi koi gao, malab, gao mein bhi koi ghar nahi hai. So, to kaha jaoge? Ita nahi, kahin pe rent pe lunga. So then suddenly, them writing that, they are giving 20 gunta, I think it comes to around half an acre. Half acre of land, saying that, sir, this is yours. For that one moment, I can still be on that side and write the exam and clear again. Because that is the that is the kind of satisfaction you will not get. That is the kind of satisfaction you will not get. And for that you have to put, that for that you have to study, for that you have to study hard. Because there are people who are waiting for you. If you are, you know, men, you know, mindset is like that. They are waiting for people like you to come so that they can rightfully come to you and say, Sir, you are wrong. A citizen should have the right to come and say you are wrong. And these, here I will conclude my, till my resignation journey. Okay. Do anybody want to know what after the resignation part? <laughs> or it's, it's, it's only, I will answer the questions. Uh, first is that, Collector part I think I have answered. Second is about dissent. Dissent is sort of, you know, it is always harmful in a way.